Regina King is back in a major way, starring as the legendary glass ceiling breaker, Shirley Chisholm, in Netflix's new semi-biopic, Shirley. Regina does an amazing job. She really does inhabit Congresswoman Shirley Chisholm. Shirley Chisholm's body language, how she would deliver her speeches, how she was approachable, but also revered. She did such a deep dive and curated not only the time and season that Shirley Chisholm ran for President of the United States, but also the background of her Caribbean roots, the accent, vernacular, body movements, the physicality of Shirley Chisholm, Regina King inhabits it all. And she is backed by an esteemed supporting cast, including the late great Lance Reddick, this was his farewell performance, Terrence Howard, Lucas Hedges, Andre Holla, Brian Stoke, Michael Cherry, Amir Van, who I believe delivered the essence of Diane Carroll so beautifully, and Christina Jackson, who plays a great Barbara Lee, who was uh, a mentee of the late, great Shirley Chisholm. This film was written and directed by author John Ridley. I like the overall story. It is centrally focused on Shirley Chisholm's rise in the ranks within the Democratic Party and the audacity she had at this time, still with a lot of the resonance of Jim Crow, the Jim Crow era, the audacity to run for president of the United States. Now, though she wasn't the first woman to run for president of the United States, she was the first making history as the first woman to run on a national ticket and the first black woman to run. Now, I'm from DC. I went to school in DC. I went to an all black school for middle school and for elementary school. And we learned black history and US history throughout the year. It was required. And I don't think many people know about the legacy of Shirley Chisholm because this weekend, as I was talking about her on social media, people didn't know about her, which is a shame because it's being erased from history books. It's being erased from books, period, and curricula throughout you know, all of the schools or at least public education in the United States. And that's really a shame because she was really a barrier breaker. And what she does, which really isn't totally illustrated in this film, she really set the tone in the country in a time where it was unfathomable. And I, I feel like though this story doesn't go deep into it, what she does cracking the glass ceiling in this way, not just for black women, but she sets the mark and sets the tone for women like Hillary Clinton to run for president, who she mentions when she does run, Kamala Harris, Jesse Jackson, Al Sharpton, and President Barack Obama. She has cracked the ceiling for women and people of color in politics. She is the first black woman to be elected to Congress and the first black woman and first woman to campaign for president on a national ticket. She's a barrier breaker. And I don't know that this story had enough time to honor the fullness of her legacy and impact in US politics. I don't think it served her overall story. I would have wanted to see her background, her Caribbean background really, it's touched on, but not enough. It's very surface level. And I wanted to see her in her element as a school teacher and how impactful she was to her students. What it took to run for Congress in New York in 68, in the 60s, during Jim Crow, even though it was in New York, I still would have wanted to see that. And more of the discombobulation of her campaign and the strategy behind her campaign and all that she really had to endure with white feminists and the black community at large and young folk who for the first time at 18 could even vote in the national elect or the presidential election at this time. What it meant to get voters like this while maintaining being herself and standing on her policy positions. It touches it, but I don't think it goes deep enough because it is going to be lost and forgotten with it not being in curricula 
across the country, books are being banned and so forth. There was more to see and say, and this story, this semi-biopic doesn't go far enough. It deserved more than that. And I think the best medium for someone as powerful and impactful as Shirley Chisholm would have been a series. This story though, focuses on her presidential run and how her campaign for president was inept to run on the big stage. They fumbled a lot, they made mistakes, and this story doesn't shy away from showing some of that. And how she was betrayed by her own Democratic colleagues and her hand was forced to give up her delegates, which is really power when you talk about the Democratic Convention or the National Convention. As U.S. politics go, you have to serve your time, you gotta pay your dues, you gotta wait your turn, and that's how Shirley Chisholm was treated with her attitude as having the audacity to run in this somewhat Jim Crow era or at the end of the Jim Crow era, and I use end loosely. Her hand was forced to hand over her delegates, and delegates are power at the Democratic uh, convention and she had to hand them over. She was really forced because the rest of the candidates did it as a power play. History would soon teach us that McGovern would become the Democratic nominee and he picked Eagleton, a senator from Missouri who didn't even like him, who talked mad trash about him and his policy positions and they ended up losing seismically to Richard Nixon. Yes, did Richard Nixon cheat? Yes, he did. But they lost seismically because that ticket, McGovern Eagleton, did an appeal to the young voters, many of the feminist groups, and even black folk. The black community at large did not vote for this ticket because like the 36 tickets before him, it was boring, white men, just a, a classic ticket. It became the lowest voter turnout in history at that point just because they didn't want to try something new, try something different. What if, just what if, Shirley Chisholm would have become the Democratic nominee, though a long shot, I get it, in this time, and would have beat Richard Nixon? Would the country be different? That's a whole nother thing. But anyway, this story shows some of that. It shows how it backfired in her marriage and how politics really does, could, I should say, hindering your marriage in a way, and how it affected her family, her mom and her sister. It touches on that. I think the issue that I had is that it doesn't go deep enough because her struggle was a lot harder than what is illustrated in this story. I think the story deserved a series because her story isn't as well known. It happened, I mean, you know, when she ran, it was over 40 years ago, and a lot of what she uh, accomplished is forgotten. And that's sad. So I wish they took time to do a mini series with this cast because I think they did such a good job. I think that's what her legacy deserved. A series, not this PG-13 watered down version of her legacy. The other issue I had is the score. The score did not pair well with this story. I needed some Sam Cooke, some Stevie Wonder, some Aretha, some Al Green, something to document this era. The score and soundtrack used here was so milk toast. I think music helps deliver that message emotionally. And I don't think that the music here was powerful enough to deliver such a story. It took me out of it. I was invested because of the performances, but if the performances weren't as good, I probably would have not been interested because it just didn't have the unction necessary to deliver this type of message. Is it worth your time? Yes, it is. The performances in this film are spot on. Very good. Regina King, she did her thing. At any rate, Shirley is currently streaming on Netflix.